What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. So you probably want to know what GPU is going to give you the best chance at hitting your return on investment the quickest when it comes to these rental platforms. Tell me! There's a lot of different rental platforms out there to utilize and they all have their strengths and weaknesses and some are going to rent better than others depending on your GPU. But we do have access to some data thanks to hashrate.no, which has added a tab for hosting. And if you go to this tab, there's a ton of information that you can gleam out of this. Let me give you an example. So if we click on a 5090, we have three different platforms. We have Vast, Clore, and SimplePod. Now at some point, hopefully they will get APIs for Salad and Okta and perhaps some more. but using this data that we have access to now I've created a spreadsheet to kind of paint a clear picture as to what GPUs you should potentially be using on these platforms but before we get to the spreadsheet bear in mind that a lot of these platforms are getting saturated already a lot of miners have moved their hardware over to these platforms in fact Red Panda Mining just put out a video today asking are all these AI GPU rental platforms saturated already and I would say that it is probably pretty saturated already however a lot of you out there just simply don't have the infrastructure required to stay consistently rented so before we get into the spreadsheet please keep in mind if you don't have a significant upload and download speed from your ISP or if you're not familiar with Linux or if you're extremely limited in your knowledge on building rigs for these purposes then I would suggest steering clear and maybe looking at something else but for now let's go ahead and take a look at this spreadsheet that I created so what I've done is I've scraped hashrate.no's data for the 50 series and the 40 series GPUs on Vast and on Clore. And what you're gonna see here is the GPU model name, the platform that it's on, the verified occupancy percentage, meaning how many of the GPUs that are verified are currently rented, and how many unverified GPUs are currently rented. So for this specific example with the 5090, 52% of the GPUs that are verified on VAST are currently rented, and 38% of them are rented if they are unverified. Next up, we have the P10, P50, and P90. The P10 number refers to the bottom 10%, the P50 refers to the average, and the P90 refers to the top 10% in regards to price. So for example, the top 10% are getting 52 cents per hour. The median is getting 35 cents per hour and the bottom is getting 26 cents per hour. And you can see it drastically changes when we look at Clore in comparison. So the bottom 10% are only getting 11 cents per hour. The median is getting 22 and the top 10% is getting 23 cents. Next up, we have our price per unit, and I'm gonna leave a link to this down in the description. Please feel free to edit these numbers as you see fit, but as you can see, I've placed the value of a 5090 at roughly $2,200, a 4090 at $1,600, 5080 at 1200 and so on. Now, if we take the average between the P10, P50, and P90, and multiply that by 24 hours in a day, we come up with $9.04 per day if your 5090 rig was rented for 24 hours straight. The next column that we have here is going to say, if we were rented at 100% occupancy rate, it would take you 243 days to hit your return on investment if a 5090 cost you $2,200 also keep in mind this does not include the cost of your electricity and it does not include the cost of the peripherals such as the CPU, the motherboard, cables, power supply, all that good stuff. The next column here we have is days till ROI on verified rigs and days till ROI on unverified rigs and the last column days till return on investment average. And hopefully at this point, you've noticed that these are color coordinated by the fastest return on investment. And as you can see, the 4070 Super 
has the fastest return on investment, followed closely by the 4070. Now, when we compare that to what we're getting out of Clore, you can see the average return on investment is extensively longer than it is on VAST. However, the occupancy rate's pretty similar though. Now, if we were to go in here and change the price of a 4070 to let's say you paid $500 for it instead of 400, then that's gonna push your return on investment average out to 404 days, which is still going to beat a 5090 and a 4090. Now, I think prior to seeing this information laid out in a nice spreadsheet, most people would probably assume that the cards with the highest VRAM are going to have the highest occupancy rates and would also yield the most amount of money. However, considering the price that you pay for them initially, in my opinion, what is most important is how quickly you're going to hit that return on investment. Now, you may have a different thesis. Perhaps density is an issue for you, but hopefully this data helps you get a game plan together if you plan on continuing your venture towards renting rigs. Also bear in mind, again, this is only two different platforms compared. I would love to have the data from all of the other platforms. Hopefully, eventually we will get that information. So when it comes to deciding what the best GPU is for these rental platforms, that's an easy answer. And it is simply the GPU that you already own. I don't recommend that you run out and buy new hardware to start deploying on these platforms. I recommend using what you already have. And most of you probably already have older series GPUs, such as 20 series, 30 series, and 40 series. And Salad is going to support all of the older gens, and they do periodically have work for that hardware as well. This will also give you a much smaller barrier to entry when it comes to things like your internet bandwidth requirements, your CPU core requirements, and you don't have to be an expert in Linux to deploy it since it's Windows based. I'm going to leave a referral link down in the description for Salad. If you could utilize that, it very much helps the channel, and I would appreciate it. So that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. So what do you think is the best GPU, and what have you had the most success with?